Piano Tastings. My name is Rich Gallicini, and I have the pleasure of sitting here with Burkhard Stein, director of the Grotrian Steinbeck Piano Company, handmade in Braunschweig, Germany. Thank you so much for allowing us to sit down and chat with you, Burkhard. Good yeah. morning to you. Good morning. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, I had the extreme pleasure, just last summer, to actually spend time in the Grotrian factory with the, with the gentleman from Musikug in Zurich. Yeah. I know. And it was an amazing experience. Uh, I, what I saw, you folks do some wonderful work. Tell me the background of the Grotrian Steinbeck piano, please. Yeah, so the, the, the company was founded in 1835. Mm -hmm. So this year we will celebrate our 180th anniversary already. And um, so it always has belonged to one single family. So it's yes. still family owned. The Grotrian family is the owner of the company. And that's maybe one of the secrets that they could pass the knowledge from one generation to the other about how to build high-end pianos. And already back in 1870, people liked our instruments very much. So for example, Clara Schumann, she was a very well-known pianist. She chose to play only Grotrian pianos at this time. And uh, that happens also in nowadays. Right. So when I was there, this is something very interesting. I've been through many piano factories. The one thing that struck me as a little different at Grotrian, um, my German is not wonderful, as you well know, um, but I was able to walk up to your craftspeople and just stand and speak with them, and those that could speak English yeah. were very happy to share with me what they were doing, why they were doing it, and what difference that makes in the final piano. Yeah. Um, so I was very pleased to watch these put, be put together from the ground up. Mm. Um, now, Grotrian has been available here in the United States now for some time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's quite a long time now. That's right. Yeah. So um, the, 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 with Grotrian and America, it's always a, a little bit of a problem that we cannot use the full name here, yes. which we use in Europe. So maybe that's the reason why the brand name is like a little bit secret for well-educated uh, people in piano business, but right. not for the ordinary uh, people. So that um, is maybe one of the things here in America, but mm -hmm. um, we try, and that's also the reason why we put our, our booth outside here this year, to let people know how nice, our how good our instruments are, and uh, to uh, educate them about the brand name Grotrian here in America Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, and you used the word secret a couple of times to the general American public. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a, a secret, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to do a yeah. video on this instrument. It's a yeah. beautiful instrument. Yeah. I enjoyed going through your factory. I enjoyed speaking to your craftspeople. You were a fantastic host, and these pianos yeah. deserve to be heard. Yeah. So I think it's time we hear them, don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. Thank you. <laughs> piano before. And, and you know, most yeah. Americans are in the same boat. Not Europeans, not Germans, yeah. because this is a well-established brand in Europe. I, I can't believe legendary pianists like Franz Liszt, Clara Schumann, Johannes Brahms, they all knew of the Grotrian and, and oh, really sure. enjoyed the piano too. Absolutely. Amazing. And I can see why. Incredible power, but also that European clarity right. that is so distinctive. Amazing com combination of tone, control, and power. So tell me what was different about this piano from other instruments you've played in the past. Can you put your finger on that? Again, I think the clarity. I think okay. European pianos have this incredible sense of never getting the sound too muddy. You always hear what's going on, even when things get really powerful 
in the mid and lower ranges, and it never loses its brilliance even in the upper range as well. It has a, it's a pure, very noble sound. I, I think there that's the way. Are. It's a very noble sound. There you are. It, it's not kind of in your face. It's not light. It is just noble. It has a regal presence to it. Now, here's the most difficult part, and we're going to figure this out. We haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but the language that we use to describe these tones, frankly, Grotrian has its own voice. Bussendorfer has its yep. own voice. Uh, Bechstein has its yep. own voice. So all of the European great instruments have their own voice. Maybe we should figure out a time where we could get all of them side by side at some point. We haven't figured that out yet. But describing the differences without context with other instruments around us is extremely difficult for anyone. Um, but well, what you said is absolutely, absolutely right on spot. But I, th but I think that's what makes this series so helpful, yeah. you know, because even if we don't have them in the same episode, you know, folks, if you're watching our show, you can always jump back to previous episodes and hear these pianos back to back. Like you really, you know, it's, it's very hard to do that, right? Yeah. So this is an incredible opportunity to be exposed to the world's finest instruments and to really hear what makes each of them sound so distinct. So we thank Burkhardt Stein for taking the moment to chat with us. And you, thank you for playing the grocery and piano. Oh. Glad you enjoyed it. Oh, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm a kid in a candy shop. I love this. This is amazing. So give us your comments below, and stay tuned for the next episode of Piano Tastings, and we thank you for viewing us. I'm Rich Gallus. <laughs> and I'm Hugh Sung. We're a little out of it, but <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>